Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Ron, for your introduction to Intel. It actually summarizes our philosophy as a company quite well. Dare to ask and dare to challenge. And um, not, I don't know how many of you are aware we are celebrating 50 years as a company and 20 years of being in India. So it's, yeah. Thank you for all the collaboration, the partnership, and um, the reinventing we have done for the last 50 years, and I'm really challenged collectively as a company for the next 50 to be as revolutionary um, as the last 50 was. And if you, if you really look at the next decades, and this is what I really wanted to talk about, is the data-driven journey. I wanted to cut it out into three different parts. What it means globally. Second, what it means for India. And thirdly, what it means for Intel as we go through this transformation, because we believe that the evolution of AI is in fact evolution of computing. And when you look at computing and you reimagine computing for the future, we can help our customers to compete better in the days to come and years to come in the data-driven world. So let me first look at what is happening in the world from a data point of view. You would have heard a lot of talk about billions of devices being connected. No question they are going to get connected. But not too many people are aware that over 90% of the data that the world or humanity has seen was created in the last two years. And less than 1% of that data has been analyzed. So that means the journey of analytics and AI is just beginning. And we have tremendous value as collectively across the ecosystem to derive or deliver value from the data that we've already created in the recent past. And the early signs of the data and analytics growth is starting to come about. If you look at AI or analytics market growth, or if you look at the AI server market growth, which is accelerating very high double digits over the next five years. And here is an interesting context which really paints a picture on why we are where we are from an AI and analytics point of view. In the last five years or so, the computing costs have gone down 56%. The storage costs in the same time frame, 2010 to 2017 is what I'm talking about, have gone down 77%. At the same time, from 2006, to say 2017, just over a decade, the performance has gone up 41 times, the compute performance. So if you marry those two, computing performance rocketing and the cost of both compute and storage going down significantly, hence we are where we are in terms of what computing can unleash on data and analytics. And the power of data to really transform every industry segment globally. Now, that is a global landscape. Is the story any different for India? So let's look at India. It's a growing economy. You already heard from our previous speaker in terms of we achieving the sixth largest growth economy status globally. That's not all. If you look at from the lens of data acceleration for the country, I think there are very interesting vectors the way I see it. And I've listed it into three areas. First is digitization. When you look at digitization, there is no country in the world that has created more data than India in terms of citizen data, Aadhaar and other linked services coming through. That's one piece. There is no country apart from China where the digital payments is accelerating apart from India. And it is still single digits today. You saw the data on the amount of digital payments outside of the big city. So huge opportunity for us to go drive acceleration in digital payments. 
And when you look at communication infrastructure disruption that this country has seen, has made us go from about 18 months back being 155th in mobile data consumption in the world to being number one. And if you combine all of that, that means you have this tremendous base within the country for data-driven disruption waiting to happen. The second vector I call capabilities. We have always been known as a country for great software skills. And data suggests that. We are today the third largest AI startup ecosystem in the world after US and China. We are the second largest developer ecosystem in the world. We are close to 4 million, 3.8 million developers to be precise in this country. And when you look at India being one of the youngest countries in the world, we don't have skills for today. We have skills for the foreseeable future, which can fuel this innovation in software. And that boards a very interesting picture or promising picture for the country, especially because AI and analytics would demand a lot of software skills as well. And the third vector is opportunity. And when I talk about opportunity, I look at it in a few different ways. Think about India together as one nation. As per constitution, we have 22 scheduled languages. But if you search and dig a little deeper, we have close to 780 spoken languages. You have 86 different scripts. We have 29 states. We have 1.3 billion people. Look at data science opportunity that this country presents, whether it's delivering high quality customer service to all parts of the country, whether it's improving citizens' quality of life in every part of the country, whether it's making the country safe across all states and all remote corners of the country. And I can go on many, many different instances on how we can use data and technology to really impact the outcomes for every citizen in this country. And there are high friction sectors in this country and globally, whether it's healthcare, whether it's education, whether it's banking, whether it's agriculture, that are really ripe for disruption because data and data science-related technologies can help us achieve that. And the most interesting part and the most promising part out of all these vectors, to me, is the fact that all the country's problems today are very unique and very complex. So if we can solve it for here, I am sure we can scale globally because it has anyway massive scale as a country itself. And if you have been able to unleash and deliver value in the country for any of the verticals, you will be absolutely scaling this outside the country and deliver value for other customers globally as well. So massive opportunity. And if you turn this to the second part, we talked about data then what are we doing as a company to really rally behind the reimagining of the infrastructure and what it means to really deliver value to customers? The volume, the variety, and the velocity of data that is coming through really means we need a different data center or different data-centric architecture. And we define it in three different vectors. We got to be able to move the data faster. We got to be able to store more data because there is a lot more coming in. And lastly, we should be able to process everything. Let me double click on each of these three vectors. When you look at moving data faster, what we have realized and data suggests in the last five to 10 years, the traffic within the data center is significantly increased. Within the rack, rack to rack or data center to data center. And that's one of the biggest reasons why we are investing a lot of 
effort on connectivity technologies, whether it's silicon photonics, whether it is Ethernet, or whether it's fabrics like Omnipath, which really optimize the network traffic. And when you optimize the network traffic, you're able to optimize computing needs for the data center and better utilization of computing. Second, in terms of storage, when you look at storing and manipulating data, it, you really need to deliver real-time insights. Most industry verticals can get disrupted, in my opinion, if you can deliver real-time insights at the edge. That cannot happen in the current memory technologies that are available. And that's why we are reimagining what is the memory theory. The traditional tiering of hot, warm, and cold data will not suffice because of latency requirements and because of capabilities that are needed. That's why the technologies like Optane SSDs, which is 40 times lower latency than a normal SSD, or whether it's persistent memory, which is absolutely a new category of memory we have reimagined, it really transformed the memory tiering or hierarchy. That means that customers, as an example, can get faster boot time using the persistent memory from minutes to seconds, or they can get higher availability from three nines to five nines. Think about it. All of these are game changers in data center technology and have not existed in the last few decades. So if you're reimagining computing, if you can reimagine storage, which is what we are doing, that can have a tremendous impact to the net business outcomes for customers. And last but not the least is processing everything. And when I say that, it's about being able to deliver across a broad section of cross-section of workloads, be it general purpose workloads, or be it accelerators, whether it's FPGAs, whether it's ASICs, for AI-specific workloads, as an example. And Xeon, as a technology, is a great example of what we have been able to, so to say, unleash in the last 20 years. This year is 20th anniversary of Xeon. And during that period, what we have been able to do is reinvent or add more innovations into Xeons, whether it's for security, whether it's for network traffic acceleration, and more recently, on AI workloads, we have been able to reinvent or improve Xeon significantly. Not only the current version of Xeon scalable, but even the future generation of products. So together, if we store, move, and process everything, the data center architecture can really cater to the needs of so much more data coming in, real-time analytics, and fast forward to AI. Now, as we reimagine the data center or data-centric architecture, the big focus for us is ecosystem collaboration and partnership, because collectively, as an industry, I think we can raise all boats, especially in new and emerging areas like AI and analytics. And there are two pieces of ecosystem collaboration and development work that we do globally and very focused manner in India as well. Number one is AI Academy, which is an outreach program that spans developers, startups, enterprises, end users, and a cross-section of people who are interested to learn about tools and technologies related to AI. There we have trained 99,000 audience across a cross-section of profiles on AI tools and technologies. We have also engaged with universities, 50 universities, to build curriculum around AI. The second part about ecosystem collaboration and development is AI Builder Program. This essentially is a culmination of OEMs, system integrators, software vendors, cloud service providers, sometimes even end users, who have the collective mentality of building AI solutions on Intel technology. And a couple of examples that I would cite in the work of community or ecosystem collaboration is the work we have done with Dell and Cloudera, where we have added an analytics portfolio solution called Ready Solution for AI. Secondly, the work we have done with Wipro in the area of homes, which is their AI solution to performance tune and benchmark that solution for image processing using convolutional neural networks. So these are a couple of examples where 
we have been able to engage with solution providers to really take the journey forward in the area of AI and analytics. Now, beyond that, I wanted to give you two customer examples where we have been able to make a difference on their business outcomes using our technology. The first one being Philips Healthcare. This is very India specific because we have worked with the India team. You all know Philips, they are a global medical equipment provider and one of the leaders at that. And they used AI and analytics tools and technologies on the biomedical imaging area, MRIs, X-rays, and several other image formats. And what they've been able to do is using our Xeon Scalable, as well as our software tools, they've been able to deliver much better outcomes, either on their bone density models or the lung segmentation models. But I won't bore you with the technical details of it. What has really been achieved as a part of that exercise is that the disease screening and diagnostic time has reduced. And that has meant material business impact to Philips and material social impact for citizens or people who are wanting better healthcare. And think about these kind of solutions, what impact it can make for a country like India that has one of the most adverse ratios of patients to doctors. We can't reach bottom of the pyramid healthcare um, or provide healthcare facilities to small towns. With this data and data science related technologies, you can really change the outcome for the country. And that's one example of how do we reimagine India using AI tools and technology. The second one is also an interesting one from China, China Union Pay. Many of you would know it's, it's a financial services firm and they had fraud related challenges. Their models that they had built was not be able to address the concerns on security threats because they were starting to unravel in different ways and there was far more, the, the models could not get precision into responses. So they rebuilt, they conceptualized a new framework. They used our technology, including software tools, to test and benchmark it. And ultimately, what it achieved was 50% better results optimization. And this, this, again, is material business impact for a banking company or financial services company like China Union Pay. So a couple of examples, and we have many more. The point being that if you think about the conventional ways or if you want to redefine one of the key yardstick would be, how do you use the data today? How do you use tools and technologies available today to reimagine that business? And I wanted to end with saying that the country today is poised for massive disruption. And that would be a data-driven disruption, no question. Intel today stands committed. Like I said, we are 50 years as a company, we are 20 years in the country this year. We are committed towards collaborating, engaging with our ecosystem partners to make this data-driven journey exciting and unleash the possibilities of the country. And we would be really looking forward to working with each one of you in whatever capacity to make the journey really go faster. And I would request all of you to watch out or get more updates on the link that is shown on the slide, because this journey is going to be really dynamic. There is so much happening at such fast pace. So stay updated, stay tuned, and we would love to stay engaged with you. Thank you very much.